Okay, so this is the first video in my series on jQuery Rehab. Now, what I want to do is I want to show people what the common uses of jQuery are and then show them the vanilla JavaScript equivalent of that just to get people off of dependency on jQuery. Okay, now, it's not that I don't like jQuery. The problem with jQuery is that it solved the problem 10 years ago. 10 years ago, there was a huge problem with the fact that different browsers required different JavaScript to do very common tasks. If you wanted to find elements on the page, if you wanted to style them dynamically, if you wanted to add event listeners, if you wanted to do Ajax calls, these were all fairly challenging things to do across all the browsers. So if you needed to write something that worked on more than one browser, which was almost everybody, then jQuery was a fantastic solution to that. The problem is that now jQuery is no longer needed for most of the things that it does. So why include this extra library in your code if you don't have to? If you can just write one line of code and it does the same thing as that one line of jQuery, why include the extra library? Okay, so I have a web page here. Um, and I want to talk about the dollar sign function. Now, this is sort of the primary thing that you're going to be using in jQuery. First thing that everybody uses. This is how you find the elements on the page that have a certain CSS selector. So here's my first class. I'm finding the element that has the first class. Here, I'm finding all the paragraphs that are inside of the element main. Okay, so with those, I'm changing the CSS property color to red for the first paragraph. And then I'm going to change the font family to Arial for all the paragraphs. And if we look at the web page, there it is. So I've turned the first one red and there's the other paragraphs. They're all set to Arial as the font family. Okay. Now the equivalent in vanilla JavaScript query selector. Now, this is a method that wasn't available when jQuery first came out, but jQuery, or rather, all the browsers now support jQuery. Uh, sorry, all the browsers now support Query Selector. And inside of here, I would just do the same thing. I want to find the first element that has the class first on the page, or the one thing on the page that has the class first. Now, I want to change the color to red. Okay, so that element, style, color, equals red. There we go. That's it. So there's a style object that applies to this object. Now, when you're using jQuery like this to fetch an element, the CSS method works on the jQuery object, not on the actual HTML element that's inside of there. So if I want to use this approach to change the values with jQuery, what we have to do is once we have the element, we have to call the get method. The get method is going to return the item from this object. So this object will have a, an array inside of it of all the elements that match this. So I want the first one that matches it, number zero. Now I have the actual HTML element and I can say style.color equals red, like that. So I can comment out the other two and just show that this one is working. So there it is, still red. I can comment that one out, save it, still working, refresh it, it's still working. Okay, so this is how you find one element. Here's an example where I'm finding multiple elements. So the vanilla JavaScript, the plain JavaScript way of doing this is query selector all. I want to find all the elements that match this. So I put the exact same CSS selector inside there. Now I've got all the elements, which are paragraphs that are inside of a main element. And this could be any combination of CSS uh, selectors. It could be IDs, tags, classes, pseudo classes, attribute selectors, whatever it is. The point is this method returns a node list, which is, it's like an array. It's a collection of elements. So it is that numbered list here. This is one thing that jQuery does do. It does loop through all of them and apply this. 
So behind the scenes, the loop is taking place, but we can do the same thing here ourselves. All we have to do is put a for each method on here. We're going to loop through all of them and apply something. Inside the for each, we have a method that we'll call, and let's say p is going to be my element. I'm going to use an arrow function. Um, actually, I don't even need the curly braces there. So this will represent each paragraph inside the node list that's returned by this. So I have three paragraphs. This function will be called three times, and this will represent each one of the paragraphs inside there. And I'm going to call p.style. Uh, and font family is what we're going to select. So we'll do it this way. Font family equals Arial. Like that. And I'll comment this one out, save it, and there we go. It is working just fine with that. There's monospace, so we can see this is working just fine. So those are the equivalents. We've got, if you want to find one, that works. If you want to find lots, this works. But in vanilla JavaScript, without jQuery, without having to include that library, we can call query selector or query selector all. And you just have to be aware that this is going to give you the first match. This is going to give you all the matches. And if you have all the matches, then you just do a for each loop. You loop through each one of the nodes. Okay, so that's our first one. I'm going to have a whole bunch more of these jQuery rehab videos talking about all the different things that you can replace with just the same amount of code in vanilla JavaScript. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will leave a copy of this page as a code just linked to in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.